Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, I'd like to continue our discussion on EMC consideration. Okay, today, I'm going to show you some photo on the essential test and measurement equipment for radiate emission, okay, which is also known as RE, and radiate immunity, okay, which is also known as RI. Okay, today, video is actually a request from my student. So this week is a happy Chinese New Year. And because of Chinese New Year, one of my class face-to-face -face lab session is cancelled. In this lab session, I actually supposed to do a demo how we actually can perform RE and RI test and measurement. Because of Chinese New Year, unfortunately, this lab session cannot be take place. Therefore, I decided to use this YouTube to share with my student how test and measurement can be done for radiate emission and radiate immunity. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Okay, before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by like and subscribe. Okay, we really need the like and subscribe in order to improve the service of this channel. Thank you so much, guys. Let's quickly do some introduction of EMC test and measurement. Okay, this diagram actually show the RI setup, okay, but I just want to quickly introduce you some of the essential equipment in EMC test and measurement, specifically on radiate emission and radiate immunity. Okay, so over here, you can see that there are actually two chambers. Okay, one chamber we call your shield or control room. Another chamber we call this as semi-adequate chamber. Okay, in this semi-adequate chamber, we actually house a EUT, equipment under test. Sometimes we also call DUT, device under test. Okay, so this equipment under test or device under test, they actually put on a non-conductive table, okay, which is about 0 0.8 meter. Okay, so this table is actually put onto a turn table. Okay, and then this turn table will rotate 360 degree. On the other side of the chamber, it actually house an antenna. Okay, this antenna is mounted onto a mask, and the mask actually can control the height of antenna. Okay, for example, in RE, the antenna will move from one meter to four meter in order to capture the electromagnetic wave that is released by the DUT. Okay, next, the antenna will be basically connect to either the amplifier or the EMI receiver, depend whether is it RE or RI. Okay, let's move on to the control room. Okay, so the control room, okay, there is a PC. Okay, this PC, basically control most of the test and measurement equipment. Okay, the final result is also sent to this computer to do some analytics or to determine whether your DUT or EUT compliant to the EMC test and all. So this is actually a brief idea, the setup of test and measurement for RE and RI. Okay, so next I'm gonna show you some of the photo regards on the essential test and measurement equipment. Okay, so this is a shield or control room, okay, which is over here. So this is a shield or control room. Okay, take a look over here. There are two columns of equipment. Okay, on the left is for RE and on the right is for RI. Okay, so over here, we call this as a controller. Okay, this part here actually control the antenna mask. This part actually control the turntable. This is a spectrum analyzer. Under the spectrum analyzer is a EMI receiver. Let's move on to another rack. Okay, right on top of this rack is the signal generator. Okay, the signal generator generate the RF signal. And underneath is all the high power amplifier. So the signal generator generate up the RF signal and pass to the amplifier. The amplifier will post up the signal large enough to disturb your DUT. Over here, you can see that there are two computers. 
on the right, okay, this is a computer that I mentioned to you early on. It actually control most of the test and management equipment. And after the EMI re e receiver actually obtain the data, it's also fed into this PC to do some analytics to determine whether your product or your DOT comply under the EMC regulation and all. Another computer is actually a video, a live video. When you actually perform test and management, okay, no one can be inside this chamber. And the situation in this chamber is actually monitored by a camera. Okay, imagine there's a camera over here. It actually monitor all the condition in this chamber and all the live video are actually fed through the control room. And basically this is where the PC is. So the PC actually can monitor the condition inside this semi-adequate chamber. This photo is taken from the antenna mask. Okay, over here, you can see that this is the non-conductive table, okay, about 0 0.8 meter tall. Okay, you can see that the table is actually rest on this turn table. Okay, this turn table will rotate 360 degrees. Okay, so this laptop okay, is just a DUT or EUT that is under the test. Next, okay, so this photo is taken uh, from the turn table. Okay, you can actually see that this is the antenna mass. Okay, so like what I mentioned, the antenna mass will shift from one meter to four meter. Okay, over here is actually the camera. Okay, it's not so clear. Okay, but this camera is used to monitor the situation in this semi adequate chamber here. This is the limit nine. Okay, so this is a limit nine for CISPR 22, okay, which is in red. So in short, whatever measure point actually exceed the limit nine, okay, which means that you need to do further troubleshoot in order to pass the compliant test. Okay, so in order to pass the EMC compliant test, all the points must be underneath the limit nine. Okay, so with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Okay, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much, guys.